Hello everyone, this is Mr. McMillan. I'm here with an instructional video on uh, constructions. So uh, in geometry, one of the most basic things uh, as far as geometry goes, uh, when it was first uh, founded, discovered, whatever you want to say, uh, was constructions. And constructions are where we create geometric objects without ever measuring anything. We're not measuring a single thing. Uh, instead, we're using a tool to uh, help us create these. And, and for this video, we're going to be using a slide compass. This is what we use, you know, we're using in class. Um, on an online one, it would be, you know, a set of circles uh, that I'll also show you uh, in class. And uh, here, um, you know, your clear part is where you would, your initial point for the compass, and then here's how you adjust the width of the compass. So uh, let's go in and we'll look at each one of these. Uh, I already have the steps lined out here, so we're just going to follow those steps. Okay, so uh, the first construction we're going to be doing is called congruent line segments. And step one, using your compass, we're going to adjust the width to the length of the given segment AB making sure to line up the points correctly. So we're gonna put our clear part of the compass here directly in the middle of A. You could also do B, it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna slide this until we see that we have a, uh, that the first hole there has the point B completely inside of it. And you can see that point there. Then we're gonna create a new point C. So it doesn't matter where you put point C, just put it somewhere. Make point C a little bit too big, but that's okay. It's not, it's not gonna matter how big or how small you make it in the long run. So this will be where we begin our new line segment. So we're gonna place our compass on point C and the width should never change. Okay, so once we set the width, we're making congruent line segments, so the width shouldn't change for it. So we put our compass on C, and now what we need to do is we need to make an arc by just holding our compass in place and then doing that. So that's an arc that we've made using the width. So on this arc, we can place a new point D. This point may be placed anywhere on the arc. Then connect point C to point D. And I'm gonna show you that it does not matter where you put your point. You know, as long as it's on that arc, you can see here that that's the same width as that as that, as that. All of these would be the same width as the original line segment. And the reason this works is because we're basically creating part of a circle where C is the center point. And of course, on a circle, and of course, on a circle, the uh, distance from the center to the edge of the circle is always the same. That would be your radius. So no matter which one we pick here, all of these line segments would be congruent to the original. So I'm just gonna draw all three of these and then label them appropriately. Okay. Um, so it doesn't really matter where you put it as long as it's on that arc, you would have all three of those distances are exactly the same. And I'm going to mark them as such. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is a perpendicular bisector. This also includes a midpoint, because remember, if you have a bisector of a line segment, then uh, it has to go through the midpoint. Okay, so we're going to take our compass and we're going to put it on point A. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the width of our compass past the middle of this line segment. Okay, so it's past the midpoint. It's not going to be all the way over. Don't put it all the way over, but put it somewhere, you know, maybe, maybe here-ish, you know, about 
three quarters or so of the way, 80%. And after we set that width, we're going to keep our compass there on A and we're going to draw an arc. Okay, I'm gonna draw an arc. And I'm gonna to have to do this probably off camera, but I'll show you, make it big enough to where we have that. So something like that. And then we're going to repeat the process at B, but we're not going to change the width of the compass, okay? Not going to change the width. So we're just gonna put our compass on point B and make an arc again, okay? Use the same hole, it'd be the one closest to the clear part. Okay. And these two arcs should intersect. Okay, those two arcs should intersect. Let me make sure these are these are fine. Yep, they look fine. All right. Now we're going to mark the intersections of the arcs. We don't have to do this, but I do it just to make it a little bit easier when I place my straight edge. And then we're going to connect those two points using the straight edge. <clears throat> and the point here, point E, point E would be the midpoint. Okay, so AE is congruent to BE. Okay, so what we've done there is make a perpendicular bisector, and of course we would show that by putting that here. And we could measure this if we wanted to, uh, starting at A and going to E, we see that that is three and three tenths or three and a quarter centimeters. And if we look here from this part, we see that that is the same uh, distance. Now, again, it's not going to be perfect. You know, we are, um, you know, we are using, using paper and pencil and sometimes with the points we make, they're a bit bigger than they should, but that's okay, okay? So that's how you would create a perpendicular bisector and all perpendicular bisectors you know, we'll have, have to go through the middle of the line segment to where both of the segments are congruent. It may not look exactly like this. You may see something where it only has the X's here and here, and then there's nothing with these, and that's okay. All right, so let's look at the next one. And the next one is a perpendicular line to a line from an external point. Okay, so we're given a point P that's external to line segment AB. It could be a line as well, it doesn't matter. And what we're gonna do is place our compass on point P. Then we're going to set the width of the compass to where it is past the line. So it has to be on the opposite side. So your point is above, so in this case, it should be somewhere below. I'm not going to make it very big because I want to be able to, you know, easily do it. Then using this width, we're going to draw two arcs across the line. So we're going to keep our compass on P and we're going to use that width to make an arc there and then make one on the other side. And we're going to mark those with points. Okay. Then we're going to place our compass on one of these points. It doesn't matter which one you do first. You're not going to change the width of your compass though. So you're going to put your, uh, uh, put it on one of those and you're going to make your arc to where it's directly below P. Okay, so something like this. And then you're going to repeat the process on your other uh, point. Again, do not change the width of the compass. Okay. 
Let's put it on the other point. Don't put it on A or B like I did to start with. And then just make your arc. Those two arcs should intersect as they do right here. We're going to place a point at the intersection. We're going to call it point S. It doesn't really matter what you call it. And then we connect points P and S using our straight edge. Like that. Okay. So that's how we connect or make perpendicular lines from an external point. Now we're going to talk about how to make perpendicular lines from a lot to a line from a point that's on the line. So this one's on the line instead. And what we're going to do, we're going to place our compass on that point. So in this case, it's point P. And we're going to set our width to a medium distance, but I'm actually going to make it to where, you know, it's, it's somewhere on the line segment if I do it. Because the with this width, it should intersect with the line. So I'm going to make it to where you have one like this. Okay, something like that. And then you do it on the other side of P. So you just rotate your compass 180 degrees and make your other arc on the other side. So something like that. Okay. Now you can label these points, as I say here, with Q and R. We're just going to keep them plain just so it doesn't take up too much room. And we're going to place our compass on one of the uh, points. Doesn't matter which one, but we are going to, uh, I'm going to place it on the leftmost point because that's what I prefer to do. And then it says set the width about halfway between points P and R. So that P and this R, this would be your other point. So you're going to set it about halfway, about right there in the middle of the point you made and point P. Okay. Then underneath P and above P, so on each side of the line, you're going to draw an arc using that width. Okay. So you're going to draw an arc right here. Doesn't have to be very big. And one below. Just draw it big enough to where you know an arc would intersect if you did it. Then you're going to place your compass on the other point and you're going to use the same width and make the arcs again above and below. The arcs you make in this step should intersect with the ones you made in the previous one. And you can see up there on top it did. And then down here below it did as well. Okay. So these are your two points that you have. And like I said, this is not going to be perfect. In fact, I can see it's a little bit lopsided somehow on, on this edge. Um, I'm not sure how that happened, but uh, it, it did. Um, but that's okay. It, you get the point. Um, I'll, I'll redraw this a little bit just to see. This actually works much better on an actual compass instead of a slide compass, but I'm just using what we, what we have. So that's all I have, of course. <laughs> so you have something right here, right here, and then you connect those two arcs together. Like so. And that is a perpendicular line through a point on the uh, line. Okay. Now I know it's not going to be perfect because you know it's um, human, you know, human error and things involved like that. But it's it's approximate enough. Okay. All right. Next up is an angle bisector. And for an angle bisector, remember bisector means that you, it's an object that cuts either a segment angle, another object into two congruent parts. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Again, we're not measuring anything. 
So we're going to place our compass on the vertex of the angle. Okay. And then we're going to set our compass to a desired width. You can make it as big or as small as you want. I'm going to go, you know, about halfway along this ray that we have drawn here for us. And we're going to draw an arc on each side of the angle. However, you can just draw a single arc that connects the sides of the angles together, and that's what I'm going to do. So you have one that looks like this. Okay. Now these two would have little points on them. So we're going to put little points on them because they intersect. <laughs> Now you can um, change the width of your arc or you can just use the same one. I'll just use the same one, but we place our compass on each of those points that we started with or that we drew right here. And then we draw an arc using that width we decided on. So you draw one right there. And then you do the other point here the same way. Draw an arc, and the arcs that you draw in this step should intersect just like they did here. Okay. Also, your arc should be in the interior of the angle, so that means they should be inside of it, okay, like they are here. Then we can place a point here on the intersection of this arc, like that, and then we connect the vertex to that point that we just made with the intersections. This somehow has gotten a little bit wonky. That's okay. Like I said, it's, it's, you know, I'm not using a fantastically sharp pencil while I'm doing this. This is just a demonstration video mostly. Uh, tools you have as far as like online will be much, much more accurate. And since this is an angle bisector, we know that this angle is congruent to this angle. All right, next up, we're going to make congruent angles. So we're going to be recreating this angle essentially. And step one is going to be to create a new point P to be a vertex for the new angle. And from this point, we're going to draw a ray of any length horizontally. So I'm going to put P pretty far down here on the paper, just so I can give myself enough room to do this. Because uh, some of these will be a little bit cumbersome to do uh, if you don't give yourself enough room. So, so make sure you do that. And uh, we're just going to draw our ray here. So on the original angle, we're going to place the compass at the vertex and set our width as desired. Again, I'm going to set mine, you know, relatively reasonably sized. And then we're going to draw an arc just like we did with a bisector. Okay, so we're going to do, do it all the way across, or all the way full. Just like that. <clears throat> okay, so we have created two new points on this angle. Now we're going to take our compass and put it on one of those points. It doesn't matter if you do the top point or the bottom point. I'm doing the top point. And then we have to adjust our width of the compass to the point that is made on the other part. Okay. So in other words, it should be this width here. Okay, so you're measuring that width there with your compass, not with numbers, just with your compass. Then once you have that, oh, I'm sorry, I, I have to do one step first. I got ahead of myself. So we take the original width that we did and we make a similar arc on the other one. Apologies. And 
can we make a similar arc here on the bottom angle? All right, something like that. Now we measure the width of this one. Okay. And now we uh, take that, that width that we have, and we're going to place it on this point down here that we made that intersects with that ray we made in the first step. So down here at the bottom, and we're going to draw an arc that intersects with the arc we just made. Now all that's left is to draw a ray that starts at point P and goes through that intersection. Like so. And we have just made angle A be congruent to angle P. I do apologize for the mistakes, but I am only human after all. Okay. Next up, we have a parallel line passing through an external point. So we're making a line that's parallel to this one. That means it has the same slope that passes through this point. Now again, we're not measuring anything, so we're not placing our straight edge on this and then moving it up here and all that stuff. No, we're actually going to construct something. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a line that passes through point P and intersects line M using the straight edge. So it doesn't matter which angle you use. I'm going to use an angle like this, give or take. And make sure you extend the upper bit of that line a fair amount. Because we're going to need it just, just so we, we have some room uh, at the top. Okay. Something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And we're going to place a little point here because we're going to be using that a lot. We're going to call it Q. And what we're going to do is place our point on, or our compass on Q. And then we're going to take our compass width and we're going to set it about halfway between Q and P. So about halfway. It doesn't have to be exactly halfway, you know, just, just eyeball it. Something like that. Okay. And we're going to draw an arc that crosses both lines. Then we're going to, without changing the width, we're going to move our compass up to point P, like so. And we're going to draw that same arc, like so. Okay. Then We have points here, just like we did with the congruent angles. We're going to put our point on one of those, or our compass on one of those intersections, and then we're going to adjust the compass width to where it's the width leading to this point here. So adjust your compass width as such, and then we're going to, without moving it, we're going to move our compass to the point that we made up here above P. And then we're going to use that width to draw an arc. And it should intersect with the other arc that you made from the previous step. So there's a point there. Now all we do is take our straight edge and connect the point at the intersection and draw a line that goes through P and that intersection like so. And these two lines would be parallel. Okay. All right, now we get to talk about 
inscribing shapes in circles. Um, normally you would draw a circle, but um, I've already drawn one for you just to make the process a little bit more straightforward and you know, quicker. So uh, with your compass drawn and your center point placed, you're going to place your compass on the center and then you're going to adjust your width to the edge of the circle. So you're going to make this your radius, okay? So you're going to adjust your compass to the width uh, of the radius, okay? Now, now that you have your compass set on the radius, we're going to take our compass and move it to any point on the circle. I don't care where you put it as long as it's on the circle. So I'm gonna start mine right here, for instance. And what we're gonna do, we are going to uh, make an arc using that radius width, like so. We're gonna do that five more times. Each time that we make an arc, we're gonna move our compass to that arc and then make a new one. So it should progress around the circle. And we're gonna make another one. And another one. And another one. And our final one. So we should have a total of six arcs. Okay. Now here's the thing though, we're making an equilateral triangle. How many sides does a triangle have? How many vertices? Well, a triangle has three vertices. So we need to pick an arc to start with. So I'm just going to pick this one. I'm going to place a point there. Now, since I'm making an equilateral triangle, I can't use all six of these because that would be six sides. That would be a hexagon. We're, we're going to do that in, the, in a bit. But I can skip every other one. So I started with this one. I would skip this one. I would place a point on this one. Skip this one, place a point on this one. And now I have three points that I can use to make my equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got this line here. Now I make my arcs rather large. You can make them smaller because they're going to intersect with the lines, but that's okay. Here. And then here. And we have just made an equilateral triangle in a circle. Oops, a daisy. Okay. All right, next one. An inscribed square in a circle. We're going to skip this one for now. I'm going to come back to it. We're going to do the hexagon first because the hexagon is the exact same process as the equilateral triangle. So you set your compass to the radius here. You make your arcs once you place your compass on the circle itself. Make your arcs. I'm going to make them a bit smaller this time. You're going to make the six arcs, which conveniently we are doing a hexagon, which has how many sides? Yep, it has six sides. So this time when we make the six arcs, we're actually going to place a point on each one of them after we've drawn them because we have six sides that we need, which means we need to place six points. And the last one here, number six. We're going to place our points on each one because we're doing a hexagon here.
hexagon. And then we're going to connect our sides or our points that we just made to make the sides of the hexagon. And this hexagon is a regular hexagon, so that means that all of the sides are congruent, all of the angles are congruent. So I could have done these both in the same drawing, but you know, um, I just want to show you how it looks without an extra triangle inside of it. Um, same process as the equilateral triangle, just you know, connecting six points instead of three. So you're using every arc instead of every other one. Okay. And that's your hexagon there. And the last one we're going to do is a square. Now a square is a little bit more involved, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a point on the circle first. It doesn't matter where you place that point. I'm just going to place it here. I'm going to label it point A. And what we're going to do is draw a diameter starting from that point. So remember a diameter is going to have to go through your center all the way to the other side of the circle. Again, it does not matter which direction you draw your diameter in, as long as it goes through the center. So you're going to have a diameter that splits it here. Okay. Then what we're going to do after we've drawn our diameter is place our compass on point A. We're going to adjust the compass width to where it's between the center and the other end of the diameter. So it's going to be somewhere around here. Okay, then using this width, we're going to place a point here, or not a point, an arc above and below that point. What we're doing here is making a perpendicular bisector. Okay, so we're following steps for the perpendicular bisector. So we're going to place an arc here and an arc below. That's awful. <laughs> My pencil really needs to be sharpened for this, but that's okay. And then one below. It doesn't matter if it crosses the circle or not. And then we're going to place our compass on the other end of the diameter and repeat the process. One above, one below. Don't change your compass width. Just use the same one you were using. Oops, a daisy. And we're going to make the same one here. And you'll notice that those don't hit the circle. That's okay. So you have two intersections now. And what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line that passes through those two intersections and the center that connects to the circle. So what I mean by that is you're going to start at the top of the circle Okay, start at the top of the circle. You're going to draw a line that goes through the center and through both of the intersections. And that forms a perpendicular bisector. Now go ahead and put points on those two, or on the circle where the line touches them. And you should have four points. Well, four points. A square has four sides. So connect those four points and you have just made an inside inscribed square in a circle. Now I do have a color coded copy of this where I take uh, each one or each step rather and uh, do them step by step in color and I also have the colors or the steps put in color coded format. Okay, so I have a bunch of different things here to help you learn the constructions. I know we haven't had the most time to do these, but that's the way life is. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope this video was interesting as far as constructions go. Make sure you work on the assignment that's posted uh, in the classroom page, and I will see you in the next video.